the road to the U.S. elections, the candidates of the Democrats and the Republicans, and expectations as our focus on special report. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris in Detroit, Michigan, speaking at the rally of what she thinks of former President Donald Trump's policies. So Project 2025, look, if he is elected, Donald Trump intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis and he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. She's been criticized for not holding press conferences and taking direct questions from the media, but that doesn't seem to have affected her reported performance in certain polls, which dates keen competition between her and Donald Trump in swing states. After President Joe Biden dropped out in a shock move after having earlier said he was all in. My name's Joe Biden and I'm a lifetime member of the NAACP. And I am all in. My word, I am all in. After a less than complimentary performance from President Joe Biden against former President Donald Trump at the presidential debate. Make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with uh, Look, if we finally beat Medicare. It had seemed President Biden didn't have the former support he had from the Democrat power brokers, including former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who having strongly supported President Biden, withdrew that support and gave it to Kamala Harris. Inclusive and, and comprehensive presentation about what is at stake. Two different visions of America. America was truly blessed, has been, continues to be blessed by the wisdom and the magnificent leadership of President Joe Biden. With yes. love, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> With love and gratitude, I salute President Biden for always believing in the possibilities of America. You know, when he said, when they say, "What's one word?" When people ask me, "Give me one word about America," he said, "Possibilities," and those are possibilities for every family to reach its fulfillment. In his belief in possibilities, in his goodness, in the goodness of the American people, and working to make it possible for people to reach their fulfillment. Last night, we saw President Joe Biden talk about his legacy, which frankly is our legacy too. Yes. The, the House Democrats passed those uh, occasionally bipartisan, uh, hopefully more so in the future, but nonetheless. And, and uh, Whip Clark went through some of that in saying the difference between uh, the two visions for America, for Kamala, uh, Vice President Harris, soon to be President Harris, and what's his name? Uh, <laughs> so he, we, last night we saw President Biden, one of the most consequential presidents in American history, who accomplished so much in the progress that we've discussed to say the best way to have the progress go forward is to pass the torch to another generation. And that is what he did with great eloquence, with great values, with great vision. And as Con uh, the, our distinguished whip, Clark said at the end uh, for, about our children, and what Kamala Harris ab is about, and I've known her for decades, I know her officially, her strength, Kamala is about strength and determination in terms of public policy. We know most recently in terms of a woman's right to choose, but the list is vast, as Whip Clark mentioned. We know her personally. She's a person of great faith, of deep faith, and commitment to public service in the most unselfish way. 
And she, I, again, politically, make no mistake, this is a politically astute vice president of the United <laughs> States. I've seen her in action. I can talk about it on another occasion at more length. But let me just say, she is capable officially, personally, and politically to lead us to victory in November. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a very exciting thing. So we have, again, Defying the odds of not having held a Democratic convention to secure votes as a Democratic presidential nominee, on the strength of President Joe Biden's endorsement when he quit, another top Democrat's Vice President Kamala Harris became the presidential nominee of the Democrat Party for the U.S. elections. It has truly been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve as Vice President to our President Joe Biden. Joe's legacy of accomplishment over his entire career and over the past three and a half years is unmatched in modern history. In one term, think about it, in one term as president, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who served two terms in office. And I know we are all deeply, deeply grateful for his continuing service to our nation. And it is my great honor to have Joe Biden's endorsement in this race. So, Wisconsin, I am told as of this morning that we have earned the support of enough delegates to secure the Democratic nomination. And I am so very honored, and I pledge to you, I will spend the coming weeks continuing to unite our party so that we are ready to win in November. And in that time, we've got some work to do. But we're not afraid of hard work. We like hard work, don't we? And we will win this election. Yes, we will. So as Leah told you, before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. That didn't go down well with the Trump campaign, who claimed President Joe Biden was forced out. After the debate, he was down, way down in the polls. They didn't even want to show the polls. They said he's not going to win. So they said, we're going to take him out and we're going to put somebody new in. This never happened to anybody before. You spend, we spent a hundred million dollars fighting crooked Joe Biden. And then all of a sudden they decide to take him out and put somebody else in. She never got one vote. She was the first loser in the primaries. You know, she ran against Joe Biden and everybody else. I think they had like 16 people running. She never made Iowa the first state. I love Iowa. You know why I love it? Because I win it every single time with the farmers. We win it. 
But she never made Iowa. She was the first one to quit. And now, and, and stupid, I, honestly, she was the nastiest to him, too. And then he picked her. I couldn't believe it. And she was part of the cabal that got him out. You know, they got him out. They said, we'll do it the nice way. Or we'll do it the hard way, Joe. We'll use the 25th Amendment and we'll call you mentally incompetent and everybody will believe us. And, you know, what they did is a terrible thing, actually. They forced him out. It was a coup. We had a coup. That was the first coup in the history of our country. And it was very successful. He said, OK, I'll leave. If that's what you want, I'll leave. The same former President Donald Trump who survived an assassination attempt in Butler when a 21-year-old man, Thomas Crooks, climbed on the roof and fired shots at him before he was taken out by the U.S. Secret Service. There are a number of ways that... This led to uproar on how the security detail of the former president had secured the venue under the Department of Homeland Security led by Leandro Mayorkas, but which ultimately led to the resignation of Kimberly Cheadle after a grueling session before the House Oversight Committee. What I can tell you, again, I don't know the specifics, is that there are times when we can fill a request. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a Secret Service uh, asset or resource. We can fill that request with locally available assets. You spoke and to anyone at the White House since July 13th? Yes, I have. Who'd you talk to? I have briefed the president and the vice president. Talk to the first lady? No, I have not. Talk to the White House staff, anyone in the White House communications? No, I have not. Have you talked to the counter sniper who took the shot that took out the bad guy? Yes, I have. And can you tell us about that conversation? I would not want to reveal conversations that I've had with my employees. The Republican convention held just days after the Trump assassination attempt, which united the U.S. Republican Party as unanimous adoption of Donald J. Trump as the Republican nominee after much inspired speeches. You know, I, when I look out and I see all the real Americans, I think about how Donald Trump, his family was compromised. When I look out there and I see Donald Trump, I think about how his business was compromised. But what happened last week when they took a shot at my hero and they tried to kill the next president of the United States? Enough was enough. And I said, let Trump a mania. Run wild, brother. Let Trump a mania rule again. Let Trump a mania make America great again. I was shocked when I heard that he has been shot. And I just wanted to know if he was okay. It was heartbreaking that someone would do that to another person. A lot of people have put my grandpa through hell, and he's still standing. Grandpa, you are such an inspiration, and I love you. The media makes my grandpa seem like a different person, but I know him for who he is. He's very caring and loving. He truly wants the best for this country, and he will fight every single day to make America great again. President Biden had expressed shock over the Trump assassination attempt and spoke of a tempering of provocative political rhetoric between both sides. Our politics has gotten too heated. I've said the Oval Office on Sunday night, as I made clear throughout my presidency, we all have a responsibility to lower the temperature and condemn violence in any form. For the people of the United States, as far as Harris supporters go, she is a knight in shining armor, including support from celebrities like Cardi B, Katy Perry, Viola Davis, and Ariana Grande, as well as your average Joe Schmo. I think there's a general sort of sense of resignation to like a, a, a lame, like a, a, 
resignation of surprise around how his message continues to resonate with a broad swath of the country. Um, and just the, a little bit of disillusionment on how that continues to be a, a, compelling, a compelling message. Now, Trump does represent the majority of the population in America. And do I want him back in there? It's a yes and no, right? Because he's a little offish, little topic. If he just doesn't talk as much, he would be a fantastic president. But never Trumpers also have their never Harris. You know, if you look at her policies, you look where she stands, look where she's done. Uh, you know, she, I don't know if she's ever even gone all the way down to the border yet. We have major problems on our border. That's one of her jobs. She is out of touch with any turnaround in normal voter. She's significantly worse than Joe Biden. I mean, she, her, her, I think her approval ratings are worse than Joe Biden's, which is shocking. Mr. Stephen Hayes is President Emeritus, Corporate Council of Africa, based in Washington, D.C. Mr. Hayes, thank you so much for coming on Special Report. Now, with the elections, United States elections uh, in view under November, uh, just at the beginning of November, we are the cusp of this very fundamental part of U.S. politics where the next president of the U.S. is going to be decided. With all the twists and turns, that has led us to this juncture, the emergence of Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee, the Trump assassination attempt, and what have you. What is your overall impression of how these elections are going to play out? Well, I think it has, you're right, it's been a very bizarre, uh, unusual uh, election system. Uh, I think right right now, that of course, the, the uh, I guess the withdrawal of uh, President Biden from the race has made an enormous difference, obviously. Uh, it's the polls right now today, according to the Washington Post, show that uh, uh, Kamala Harris is now leading in three key states. Um, but polls, of course, mean nothing at this time. It will be 90 days from now will be the, the story. So I, I think right now it's going to be an extremely tight race. Uh, I think that... Uh, it's changed dramatically in the last week. Uh, it probably will change more dramatically. I think the, the debates will be uh, more critical than they normally are, frankly. Um, particularly the first debate, I guess, is scheduled for September 10th. So it's going to be a wild ride. And, I, and uh, former President Trump is uh, going to make it a very wild ride in any case, I think, uh, even to the uh, election night. Do you think the emergence of Kamala Harris, the way she did as the Democratic nominee, will impact the election in any way? Because it seems to have been, in many people's eyes, undemocratic. Joe Biden was the nominee. After the uh, debate with Donald Trump, where he didn't do so well, in many people's view, views, it appeared that he had been uh, forced out, if that was uh, what happened. In any case, she became the nominee without uh, them going to the Democratic convention. No, I, I, I think that in a certain way, you know, it, it wasn't the traditional Democratic way. Uh, I think uh, it was a, a case of everyone having to adjust very quickly to what's, what they think is best for the party. It was an intra-party uh, issue. Uh, certainly, Biden needed to withdraw. Uh, it was not just a questionable bad performance. It was just beyond awful. And it, it was very revealing to a lot of people. So I think he had no, I really don't think he had a chance after that. Uh, it, was, it was just, it was shocking. Uh, his, he clearly has aged a lot. So I, I think the Democrats had no choice. They could have they could have gone, I suppose. They do have a, did have a choice to go on to the convention. I think uh, it was clear that, that there was a uh, coalescence behind uh, Kamala Harris right away. And so there, were, there was, uh, I think, little point to, to pretense. So, yes, I, the Republicans will say it was undemocratic. I think... Uh, the Republicans are not in a particularly strong position to be calling others undemocratic, but otherwise, uh, it is what it is. It's going to go forward. Uh, it's going to be a very tight race, I think, as of today, and uh, we'll see what, see what happens. But uh, 
it's uh, it's passed. It's happened. We'll see how the Democratic convention goes. But there was a strong, I think in this case, a strong consensus. Uh, the primary really didn't develop until after 1968 in a lot of ways. So uh, it's, it is what it is, I suppose, is the best cliche to use in this case. How about her vice presidential candidate, Tim Walls of uh, Minnesota, I believe? Uh, it was touted earlier that Josh Shapiro would have been uh, the vice presidential uh, candidate for Kamala Harris, but another twist and turn, and Mr. Walls uh, has become that. Well, it's easy for me to say, but I did predict that. Uh, that, that there, were, there were a group of Midwestern governors, Democratic, very powerful, who also wanted a Midwesterner to step forward uh, because they felt that, it was a, that uh, the Democrats could win uh, Midwestern states, particularly Wisconsin and Michigan, with, with a Midwesterner on the ticket. Uh, Shapiro was also a, would have been a very, very good choice. I think he would have guaranteed the delivering of of uh, Pennsylvania. I think uh, Pennsylvania is still very much in the play and a very possible Democratic win as well as a Republican win. It's neck and neck right now, according to the people on the inside that I know in Pennsylvania. Um, Shapiro also, I think, uh, was would have would have made it, the ticket look like East Coast, West Coast more. Um, but I think it was a very tough decision for the vice president, and I, I think probably the, the more acceptable uh, uh, candidate uh, won out in terms of who, who she selected. And I, by more acceptable, I mean that Harris will need to have Midwestern states. And so a Midwestern governor, I think, helps a lot. Uh, I think it will also help uh, rein in some of the rural vote. The rural vote, uh, roughly, you know, 40 to 40, 50 percent of the country is largely Trump territory. I think Waltz will cut into that. He's uh, got an interesting background, uh, coach, Midwesterner, uh, fairly middle of the road, despite uh, Trump trying to paint him, uh, paint him as uh, extreme liberal, which is nonsense. He's very strongly middle of the road. So I, I think it was a it was a good choice. I think uh, Shapiro would have been a, a good choice as well. Uh, I think this probably strengthens the ticket a little more. Mr. Stephen Hayes, thank you so much for coming on Special Report. Thank you. My honor as, as usual and good to see you again. Thank you. Likewise. A change of guard in the presidential niche means a change of policy in some cases, inclusive of which shifts in bilateral relations with certain countries, depending on the leader in the White House, which is why this is one election. The rest of the world, including Nigeria, will be keenly watching to see the outcome. For special report, I'm Alumide Thank you for watching.